Timberland Construct 10061 is a collaboration with Concept Kicks. Every six months, a team of innovators and creators are going to rethink and unthink every step of the boot making process. They'll run amok in the factory and work together with the skilled craftspeople to define what boots can be for the future. Welcome to Boots Beyond Borders. Welcome to Timberland Construct 10061. All right, guys, so welcome. We're so excited to have you here. This is easy, right? The name that we're working with is Construct 10061. That is the product code for the iconic yellow boot. What is an icon? It's a clear and distinctive product. It defines its own category and it's capable of constant reinvention. What we're doing is we're providing a platform for you folks to explore what it takes in making an icon. We're kind of ushering into a phase where those chunky proportions that make boots are starting to kind of come back, at least in my opinion. You know, dad sneakers, chunky proportions, all that stuff. People wearing slightly wider trousers is all kind of perfect for boots. And just like, what is the evolution of product? What, like, how do we bring things together? How do we create something new that makes sense for what Timberland is? You know, tomorrow or whenever, I'd like to come around and, and make this a real collaborative thing. So I'm hoping that everyone kind of does the same thing. We all talk to each other and really just make this as collaborative as possible. I've been to footwear factories uh, in Asia, I've been to footwear factories in the UK, and the big difference here is the soul that goes into it, you know, and I don't mean outsole, I mean like S-O-U-L soul. Like when they're making shoes, it's almost like more like of an art form than a task. Talk about the genesis of, of this whole Construct 10061 idea. We all kind of came up with this idea of making what we already do at Concept Kicks more transparent. Different projects require different people with different skill sets. Depending on what the project needs, like I'll take a, you know, uh, a knitwear specialist over here, or a pattern maker, or, or whoever, and we'll start innovating from, you know, from the ground up. Usually when we do that, you know, we're signing NDAs and we can't share that we're doing this. Right. We thought it would be super refreshing to kind of just take the lid off of that and just showcase what we're doing and how we kind of curate this co-creation yeah. um, thing and that's, that's why we're here. Yeah. Make a lift, put it on there, we'll see what everyone's yeah. doing. Check back in in a couple hours. Have you guys thought about doing your treatment, like the shoe you're wearing, to a white boot? Yeah. We, can, we can get you a white boot, okay. but it'll take, a, it'll take a half a day. So tell me what Peterson Stoop does that's different than what people might normally think as shoe manufacturing? We make everything by hand in our own studio in Amsterdam. We start off by collecting uh, secondhand sneakers, take them completely apart, so like every little uh, pattern mm -hmm. part, and create like a new shoe, but from recycled leather. Were you surprised by like the craft that you're seeing? No, I think it's kind of what I expect from everyone here. I think for maybe people like myself, David, Daniel, it might be a little bit surprising. We spend a lot of time behind a computer. I think yeah. it's uh, different for us to be able to just sit down in the workshop and right. get cracking. It's been really cool to see how people have started to work together. Yeah. And I mean, you can see the results already. You know, everyone brings a different element, and so you can see in the shoes, every single shoe has a, a few different kind of fingerprints yeah. on there. And yeah. so seeing those come together is yeah. really interesting. Real quick, lightning round answer right now. What's the one that hits you? Um, I like the one that they're just finishing now. It has this, it's a full knit uh, six inch that they've put a leather piping around all the edges with padding inside. And who heralded this one? That's Pete Sinistoop and Suzanne Hengel. So you're half technician, half artisan. Yeah, yeah, and that's how I want it, because 
most of the time my ideas are so pushing the boundaries that people say no, what you want, it's not possible. We have to do it differently and I'm saying no, why is it not possible? We have to do it this way, <laughs> we have to do it. So what we could do, so, so those are kind like of... Like that and then like that, like that, like yeah. that, like that. But do you want just stitches, like like he shows here? Like so, yeah. In the in the bottom here, we do it like thicker, so it's like thick, like say like a really thick line, and then it gets thinner and yeah. it goes into yeah. the stitches. That's super nice. Okay. That's super nice. What were some of your like early design inspirations and muses? I take a lot of inspiration from like Dada movement, mm -hmm. like those sort of Duchamp, like ready-made, chucking things together. Yeah. Kind of questioning a little bit what people perceive to be art or to be fashion and what it could be. And I think you can kind of see from my work as well, it's quite instant. Yeah. So everything that I do is very, have an idea, work through it, and then it's done and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, this, that stuff's so sticky, it's crazy. Yeah. We are. So, so this would attach under here. Yeah. Thank you, man. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. Since I was a kid, I just wanted to be a footwear designer. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, I saw that there's this bigger picture. Yeah. In footwear, it's not just design. It's about production. Um, it's about the, how it affects the world. It's ecosystem, socially, etc. So it was like, how can I affect or how can I gain more from footwear? We want to create a product that's cool, that looks great, uh, but designers can really appreciate the craft yeah. that goes behind it. But we need to affect not just the way a product looks, we need to affect how it's consumed and how it can be reconsumed or mm -hmm. how it can be put back into the environment. It's integral for the future. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. What I really wanted to show was what happens when Super talented individuals come together and I think this table shows like what can happen when you just you don't have any preconceptions all about creativity and create without not to be corny but you create without borders. So thank you to everybody so much. This is amazing. Beyond Borders concept is really dope to me because uh, A, obviously there's this geographical theme of you know people coming from all over the world to be able to create this amazing thing. But more importantly, I think the borders are in the way people think and the categories that they think they need to be, you know, residing in. You know, we have a knitwear specialist who's coming here and we're asking her to break out of her knitwear roots and we have like a streetwear guy who's coming in here and trying to break out of the streetwear thing and we have a shoemaker who's trying to become something different and you have all these people who maybe in their everyday nine to five lives live within a border in their mind and by coming here we're asking them to break out of that border and when you have you know half a dozen people trying to break out of their respective borders it becomes a really beautiful chaotic thing. <laughs>